So the next topic, uh, I brought this up that I wanted to talk about, uh, is how everyone on K-pop Twitter really loves the mistreatment Olympics. <laughs> Uh, which K-pop group is being the most mistreated? Which member is being the most mistreated? Who, you know, and people fight over this. It causes fan wars. It's, it's, I don't know. But right now in the SM fan community, specifically, there's a huge fan war right now about mistreatment um, because uh, Red Velvet fans are saying that Red Velvet is mistreated and some SM stands took that as a diss towards their group, particularly N citizens. And, um, you know, uh, as a diss, yeah, N citizens. Your idols to be more mistreated than someone else. Well, because they're like, oh, we get a whole bunch, like, NC NCT gets so much content, which they do. They get so much content. And Red Velvet gets, like, no content. Yeah. At all. Like it's okay. not, and they will say that's not fair. And then Ed City, Ed Citizens are like, "You're just mad that we sold two million albums and you only sold blah 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 blah." And then it becomes like an argument, you know, which is also annoying because nobody was dissing you. But honestly, to the Red Velvet fans, and this might be very controversial. Uh, I have not liked or retweeted any of these tweets about the mistreatment because, frankly, I do not know what they think about this. You know what I mean? Do they perceive it as mistreatment or are we just perceiving it as mistreatment? Because I had to think about it from, you know, a lot of these people are high school kids and that's okay, yeah. you know. But I had to think about it as a 20-something who is also in a creative field, you know. When I think about it, Red Velvet kind of won the game when it comes to K-pop. Every time they put out a song, it's a, a hit in Korea, a top 10, top 5 hit. And they don't have to go on that many variety shows or music shows to make that happen. The variety shows, you know, and people are like, oh, they only went on their own variety shows. I'm like, yeah, that's kind of like, that sounds great. Honestly, you know, they get to hang out with their friends and do what Red Velvet fans actually really want to see is just, just them interacting rather than, you know, a bunch of guys who are old enough to be their dads just hitting on them for an hour which is what generally happens on the variety shows. And then they, you know, did, they did some music shows, but they're not doing it to the point where, you know, like poor Young from NCT, we had to beg SM basically to let him take a break so his back would heal. And I remember Joy talking about the Peekaboo era. She said, we were working so hard that I was getting nosebleeds every day. And we've all seen those compilations of, k-pop idols fainting and throwing up and all that kind of stuff so i'm like they're you know they get to put out a song everyone likes it and they don't have to like overwork themselves like this and nct is very clearly overworked i don't think this is mistreatment they're probably like yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly and there's been so many times that i see tweets where people are like, this idol is mistreated. I'm so sick of this. And it's like, just makes me roll my eyes because you kind of have to think about what the artist wants. I think that's an important conversation. In terms of Western celebrities, there's all there's tons of artists here. I mean, people get annoyed, but you know, they don't put out albums for like two years, three years at a time, sometimes five years at a time. And no one really says anything. It's their prerogative. I just feel like, you kind of have to think about what the artist likes. Red Velvet is like, you know, a veteran group a little bit at this point. I feel like they, you know, have certain control over certain things. They have a lot going on for themselves. They're like grown women. So I also agree with Olivia. Like, I think they are good with like just chilling out, making hits. Like, they're very established. It's not, they don't have to overwork themselves to establish themselves they're already there so it's kind of weird that people act like they want them to be mistreated i think people i think we've talked about this before but fans project their desires onto the celebrities because they want them to be competitive or you know they want them to kind of compete with other groups so then they kind of act like the fan, the celebrities want that as well it's not always the case Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> but that's what I agree. That's totally what I think. I just think like, you know, 
of course, I would love to see more content from them. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, let me change to the two <laughs> people. Uh, of course, I would love to see more content from them, you know, but at the same time, I don't want them to be getting nosebleeds and throwing up. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you're really a fan, I feel like don't want to see them be overworked. I, you know, what happened with Taeyong was like so incredibly unacceptable. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't. I don't want to, if you really care about these people, like you say you do, and don't just think of them as being, like, your little, like, pretty people slaves for them to dance and sing for you, <laughs> you should be like, well, you know, I, I don't want them to be doing every single thing possible. You know, maybe they just want to do, maybe they did just want to show up on each other's shows. I, I think that's fine, you know? And it's not like they're expressing distaste for the company at all. They just signed you know, three or probably three more years of their contract. So, you know, they're clearly not mad at SM the way we are. And um, I don't know. I just don't, I don't feel like, I, I feel like because we're, we're upset with the lack of content, therefore it's, ah, oh, they're mistreated. You know, I, I don't know. I do think one group I do have to say, I do actually think is mistreated and be, only because I see the way they act about it and how they how upset they sound and not because of the fans and that's blackpink they look mm -hmm. like they look like they're sick and tired of selling shit and not making music <laughs> and yeah. rose seems pretty pissed on her tiktok um and uh so i i would say like this girl wants to sing you know let her sing <laughs> they all want to yeah. perform um, and they have like no songs. Uh, that's that seems like pretty obvious mistreatment to me because they're upset though. Because Jenny and Rose in particular have expressed discontent with YG. That's why I feel like they're mistreated. But yeah, the same thing. The same thing happened with JYP and Got Seven before they officially left the label. You could clearly tell that there was like mismanagement and just no communication and that like the members themselves were very tired of the situation and like wanted it remedied like and if again if it's the artist that makes sense uh, there are times when people will send trucks to these companies for things first of all i don't believe in the trucks i feel like we should do away with the trucks but you know like i feel like uh, personally a lot of solo stands and a lot of i would say like people who are really heavy on bias within groups sometimes feel like the member they specifically like the most is mistreated but that's simply because you want to see more of them that's very different you wanting to see more of them and them doing more stuff is a you thing that's not necessarily a company thing unless the artist itself is proclaiming like hey i don't get enough of this i feel this way like a lot of people take on like they can interpret what the artist wants and that's simply not true for example a lot of armies and i agree i would love to get more content from Jin. i love Jin. i love his voice i think he's a beautiful ballad singer i would love for him to have more lines but at the same time i think a lot of the times armies are like oh Jin doesn't get enough lines he's not put on the front burner enough and like the company's mistreating him. Meanwhile, like Bong PD's like in Jin's cook dinner, like kitchen cooking him dinner. And like Jin's like, oh, this is my big brother. So I'm like, who is to say really that we know the relationship that they have and like what the mm -hmm. like, you know, what the behind the scenes are. We don't know those things. And therefore, unless the artists themselves express it or tell those things. We're making assumptions, and Absolutely. assumptions can only take far. Absolutely, yeah. that's so true. Even so, like Solgi yeah. admires Lee Su Man so much. She honestly brings it up all the time how much she admires this guy, and everyone's like, "Fuck Lee Su Man! I hate." First of all, he has no control over pretty much anything anymore. He just he's just the name, you know, and he <laughs> helps put together the groups. But for the most part, business decisions aren't him. But Everyone loves to be like, I hate him, blah, 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 blah. Meanwhile, everyone in the groups at, of at, all the SM groups are like, we love Lee Su Man. He's such a genius, and I want to learn so much about him. So it's like, 
what you are literally projecting how much you like aren't happy with SM versus how much the artists aren't happy with. They're clearly, you know, fine. fine. Especially once you're a senior at SM and you've got control. Like, the situ mm -hmm. like, it seems fine, you know? I'm sure being a new SM group sounds like a lot of fucking work. But once you, <laughs> once you like, once you're there, once you're there, they kind of were like, you know, do you? I, I just, I don't think it's, I, I don't think people really understand uh, necessarily what you know an artist would want. I would feel like for me, if I was a K-pop idol, I would want to be able to put out music, you know, with my group and by myself, and you know, do pretty much the minimum amount of extra shit that's not that as possible. <laughs> yeah. And you can tell some some idol groups, you know, they are competitive and they do want more, but they're they will voice that. Like mm -hmm. ATs is the type of group that's like, we're greedy and competitive. So maybe there <laughs> is <laughs> that's what they say. That's literally the word that's verbatim what they say. We're a greedy and competitive group. We can kind of tell and it's like if you know, maybe there's more reason there to believe or wonder. Well, really. Also, they're oh, new are they being ish. Yeah, they're newish. Of course, like you know, you can think that or wonder that, but just wait for the artist to say it. I also think there are certain times where you know this comes down to fans not really living their own lives and having things going on because when you are you know, living vicariously through someone else's accomplishments, then you want more for them. And yeah. I feel like that's a big thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like where you're yeah. like, especially oh, because of how yeah. K-pop kind of works with the voting and like the exactly. music shows and everything like their wins are your wins. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like you're, you know, reading articles, you're pressing buttons, but they're like, training for this like yes. they're doing vocal lessons and dance lessons and pouring their like all of their resources and themselves into this so yeah watching a couple ads like, Dang, when is bts actually coming back like we haven't had a full album girl i need like come on now like it's an album that. is a lot of work <laughs> it's a lot of work and they released three songs like i'm like relax yeah i'll be fine like just focus on something yourself like you know do a project and i'm not even saying things like touch some grass i'm just saying like find your own passion i see why yeah. idols say that say that so much to their fans like you should go out and date you should go out and find your own passion like things like that because that that kind of that's very important for you not to be so consumed in, in by this person yeah and of course, I could see that, like, I, I just know how I was in, like, middle school. Not so much high school, but, like, late middle school. How obsessed I was with, like, Twilight and the Vampire Diaries. I get it. You know, that's part of being a 12 to 15-year-old. It's it's normal, but um, especially when you're, like, a weird kid. <laughs> um <laughs> I'm dead. I'm dead. You know, nobody <laughs> wants to date me, but there's always Edward, you know? <laughs> that is very much a real situation. I understand. I was there. Uh, I relate to you. But um, also, you know, I uh, when, you, when it comes down to it, artists generally are frustrated with how much the public wants them to compete um, and how much... You know, it's all about the Oscars and the award shows or the music shows and the, you know, most people just want to be able to make a living off of doing the thing that they love. And yes. um, that's kind of the thing they care about the most, you know, uh, of course, you know, achieving things is great. And, you know, like shout out Queen Dub got like six or seven like music show wins after like a year and a half of no red velvet. I mean, that's great. And I'm sure they felt really great about that. But I'm sure the thing they were most happy about was that they got to do an album together for the first time in a long time. And they got to spend a lot of time with each uh, together, you know, as red velvet Sweet. and do some fun stuff and make music. And, you know, that that's the thing they care about. Honest. I, I feel like they probably care about more than like, Oh, I, I am 
number blah 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 on this brand index blah 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 and this many people liked this neighbor article and like I just don't think they care that as much as you do about that I really don't <laughs> yeah well they have to, they care about the fans a lot like all idols care about their fans but I don't think they put we put way more pressure on be of like being a fan and like voting for these things and like doing that than just sometimes I think even enjoying the actual mm. art that these people are making for us. So I just think, yeah, there has to be a good, good balance to yeah. being a successful fan. If you are devoting your entire life to this and like letting things that actually mean something fall through the cracks just to like vote on time for certain groups and awards and like you're you're not winning like that's not winning in my book like i say this as i woke up at four o'clock in the morning to watch that damn fan meeting that cost thirty dollars I, mean, you know, I, I have lost my fair share of sleep for an online <laughs> bts concert i have done that but like at the same time it was a worthwhile sacrifice. And I understand that like, everyone has a different radar what's a worthwhile sacrifice to them. I just think that sometimes even that pressure of, like, that pressure can be transferred to the artist as well. Like, even BTS talked about how being on the Billboard 100 constantly is nerve-wracking for them because they're afraid that if now that they don't chart right away that people will be like, oh, they're losing their touch. And they say that in a way it puts its own pressure on them. Like, yes, it's a success, but at the same time, that comes with repercussions. Yeah. 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 Maybe the fans, um, yeah, maybe because the fans care so much about that thing, it adds to it. Because personally, I think that, you know, the bigger you get, the more you're going to feel like that. Imposter syndrome is just real. I think you'll always feel like that. The more success you have, the more pressure you're going to feel. I mean, Naomi Osaka is going through it, and that's why she's taking a break from tennis. So I think that's natural, but I think the fact that the fans care so much about those little achievements really adds to it and maybe makes them feel even more pressure and like like they, like they should really care, and yeah. that can be hard. It's interesting that you bring up an athlete in this because – um, you know, I think a lot of people think of this as like a team sport that they're rooting for, you know, <laughs> um, oh, and, and it's yeah. really, you know, as much as music shows and winning and that stuff is fun. At the end of the day, it's really not a competition. Um, it is, you know, <laughs> being there to support someone doing and, are, you know, doing something that is really difficult. You know, being a K-pop idol is not and being a pop star in general being a, being any kind of creative field and being that big and that successful at it is not and you know you're supposed to be there to support that endeavor and not necessarily to be like kissing your own ass about like oh they sold this many albums and they're on this part of it you know of course that stuff is like great and important in terms of like getting them to be able to make more music and to continue going forward but like it's also not, you know, it's it's not like March Madness v or anything. Like, <laughs> nobody's a winner, you know. There's just gonna keep being more music and more, you know. It, it's it's really not mm -hmm. a competition. It is, you know, and we could take those music shows to show that how much we appreciate them and things, but it, ne it shouldn't necessarily feel like you're competing via them and like. Yeah. They win, I win, like a weird sports fan kind of thing. It's like sports fans being like, we won. I'm like, you sat on the couch while LeBron did the work. You did not. <laughs> <laughs> you did not. Even, <laughs> even things as simple as like streaming, like people go around guilting people like you weren't streaming like the right way or you weren't like at home on like you were at work when people were actually streaming, like, okay, some people, like, we have to live lives. There are things that we have to do in order to, like, survive, one. So, like, on a Wednesday, if they release music, no, I cannot sit on my couch with my laptop and my phone and my TV all streaming. Like, I can't do that. Yeah, I'm so, I promise and that you, doesn't make me a doesn't bad care fan. either. 
Like that that doesn't make me a bad fan. I should be listening to music because I want to be. Obviously, like it's fun to achieve goals and to get like, oh, the most viewed music video and so and so. That's fun. That's really nice. Like that's cool. I love being like, yeah, I was a part of that. I was definitely streaming. Like I've streamed before and it can be fun, but you have to make it fun. And sometimes when you get really, really tired of listening to something over and over and you need to take a break, that's okay. That there should not be a you're not streaming. This is your fault. You didn't try hard enough. Like, no. This is if it's negative, stop. Like also, that's it. If I was an artist, I don't know how I would feel necessarily about the whole streaming thing because I would want people to be listening to the song and it to be popular naturally because people like it and not just because my fans are my fans and they just did it because they feel some kind of weird moral obligation to like keep refreshing the page. Um, you know what I mean? Like I would feel like, do people really like me for my music or do they like me because I'm like good looking and then they can like get this achievement off of me as well? It just, I would feel like some kind of like, I don't know, confusion and also some kind of like questioning of my talent and all that kind of stuff too if that was like you know I felt like that was the only thing people were interested in me for I don't know does that I, make sense yeah I, yeah, I, I agree I would probably feel the same way you know? I will say that like usually it's nice because a lot of there are a lot of BTS fans in general yeah. so it's not that concerning to me. And I feel like uh, their numbers across the boards and sales and like tickets for concerts and blah, 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 they're all pretty much the same. So clearly they just have a lot of fans and obviously their fans are really devoted. And that's a beautiful thing. I do think it's a beautiful relationship. Obviously there is just some fine tuning that needs to be done. Oh, but that's yeah. in everything. That's, like That's true. I'm a, as, yeah, as I like, mentioned, I'm a Star Wars <laughs> fan and a gamer. I've seen, I, I know what bad fandoms are like. <laughs> exactly. They pop isn't is, that like, bad compared to those two. <laughs> yeah, and when it comes to it, like, it, there's always good and bad in everything. Mm -hmm. And fan culture is, of course, one of those things where you can always find the really good and you can always find the real...